Attention shoppers. The new Atari cartridge game is in. Excuse me. Uh oh. George again. Ooh, Atari's air speed battle. It comes with 27 games, but that's just for starters. You can get nine cartridges, 187 games. Ooh, blackjack. <laughs> oh! I'd like an Atari. Sorry. Only our demonstrators left. Mine! No, George. Mine. The new video computer system by Atari. More games, more fun. The Atari 2600 is considered by many to be one of the most nostalgic game consoles of all time. When the topic of retro gaming is brought up in conversation, the Atari is almost always mentioned along the likes of the Nintendo Entertainment System and Sega Genesis. The Atari, however, predates both of those consoles and laid the groundwork for the gaming industry we know today. The Atari 2600 was developed by Ted Dabney and Nolan Bushnell, who created the Atari company in 1972. Codenamed Stella in development, the console was developed as a direct competitor to the Fairchild Channel F, which was released in 1976 to decent sales. Realizing the need for immediate console production, Bushnell sold Atari to Warner Communications so that production on Stella could begin as soon as possible. In 1977, the console was released to the public, but the 2600 name we know of today was not the console's original name. The Fairchild Channel F console was originally called the Fairchild Video Entertainment System. Atari responded to this by naming their console the Video Computer System, or VCS for short. The launch models of the VCS are distinctive and easy to identify due to their thick plastic molding on both sides and the fact that all six game switches are on the front. These original models were manufactured in Sunnyvale, California, and due to the weight of the systems, they were soon nicknamed Heavy Sixers. Atari soon shifted manufacturing to Hong Kong, and the design of the console was changed slightly. The easiest way to distinguish between the consoles is to look at the plastic molding on the sides. The consoles with thicker molding are the launch models. Now you can play most all the video games you'd ever want to play. Introducing the Sears Cartridge Telegame System. Atari had a contract with Sears at the time to license and reproduce their consoles and games as part of the Sears Telegames brand, and Sears did just that with the Atari VCS. The design of the system was unchanged, although Sears did change a few things, including some notable styling differences as well as the orientation of the controller ports. The Atari name was also nowhere on the console, replaced by the Telegames brand. Despite this, the console's insides are identical to the VCS, and all versions of the console should not have any issues with incompatibility. Sears also made Telegames versions of pre-existing Atari games, but they were unchanged from their original releases and will play on any Atari VCS. After a few years of growing success, Atari yet again revised the VCS into the version most people are familiar with, the 4-switch version. This version of the VCS was released in 1980 and was prominently featured in a majority of Atari promotions and advertisements. Those who purchased a brand new VCS were treated to a large amount of included components, like a combat game cartridge and a set of paddle controllers as well as the original joysticks. The 4-switch VCS retained many of the styling hues that made the 6-switch version so recognizable, such as the famous wood grain finish on the front of the console. Despite having only 4 switches this time, the console keeps the most important functions up front. In addition to power, there is a switch for either a color or black and white TV, and on the other side there is a game select switch, which allowed players to change between multiple versions of a game that were programmed on the cartridge, and the reset switch. The back of the console has several differences from the original 6-switch version, as the two difficulty switches are now back here, next to the controller ports and the port for the AC adapter. Video output on the VCS is interesting, as there is no dedicated AV port. Instead, an AV output cable is directly hardwired into the console with what looks like a standard composite jack at the end. This jack is meant to plug into a switch box that will output the video signal using the screw-type connectors most TVs had at the time. Fortunately, it's much easier nowadays to connect an Atari to a television by using one of these adapters, which allows the cable to easily connect to a coaxial input. You can also feed this signal through an RF modulator to get composite video. Regarding controllers, the VCS had a great variety. The standard joystick controllers are as iconic as video games come, and although they might look primitive, they work well for the games that were designed for them. 
Some games were also compatible with the paddle controllers, which offered fluid motion thanks to the knob-like design they had. There was also a driving variation of the paddles, which was compatible with a few racing games. Also available were a trackball controller and even a set of wireless controllers, way ahead of their time. Discover Atari. Atari! And discover how far you can go. It's sure to be common knowledge at this point, but the Atari VCS popularized the use of cartridges for video games. Atari games came in all shapes and sizes, and this was due to the growing number of third-party developers making games for the system. Every developer had their own distinctive style of cartridge, and there was no shortage of games on the VCS. As time went on, the VCS received yet another revision as it removed the famous wood grain finish the console was well known for, making the console all black. These versions of the Atari were suitably nicknamed Darth Vader consoles. The Vader Atari also marked the first time the system was officially known as the Atari 2600, and this naming trend would continue with Atari's future consoles, the 5200 and the 7800. Soon after the Vader console's release, the infamous video game crash of 1983 occurred, leading to massive losses for Atari as well as other companies developing games. To the consumer, however, there was no shortage of games for the 2600, and low prices meant that games could be purchased in bulk for inexpensive prices. Nintendo and Sega picked up the pieces after the crash with the Nintendo Entertainment System and Sega Master System, but the 2600 was not quite finished. In 1986, Atari released a scaled-down version of the console, unofficially known as the 2600 Junior. The console was marketed as a budget entry into the world of video games, and sold relatively well. These models are the least expensive if you wish to obtain a 2600 in this day and age. Support for the 2600 lasted all the way until 1992, ending a 14-year run for the console that helped firmly establish video games as a viable market that would last for decades. Atari did release a few other systems, but none matched the appeal and practicality that the 2600 possessed, and Atari soon became a shadow of itself, unable to match the level of success they had when the 2600 was at its peak. Today, the 2600 enjoys a loyal following from its fans, as well as a homebrew community that continues to develop games for the platform. Younger generations may be more familiar with the Atari Flashback consoles, which are a common sight at stores today. These consoles are affordable, plug-and-play systems that include a selection of pre-installed 2600 games to try out. Surprisingly, many of these consoles can be fitted with a cartridge slot to run original Atari cartridges. If you're good with soldering and don't want to track down an original Atari, this might be a good route to take. Original 2600 systems today can be somewhat rare and expensive due to their age, and should you find one for yourself, maintenance is key to preserve it for future generations. The Atari 2600 was inducted into the Toy Hall of Fame in 2007, and it is more than deserving of it. The system has its place in history, just as it had its place in the living rooms of so many people 30 years ago. As technology advances and systems get more powerful, it's important to remember one of the best classic game systems of all time. Even decades after its release, there are still plenty of reasons to ask yourself and everyone around you, Have you played Atari today? Three out of this world games from Atari, the number one video computer system with more games than any other. Everyone's gone Atari, the number one video game.